probably four apart from the, the internet where humanity essentially acquired a, a nervous system and all of humanity's knowledge was instantly accessible from anywhere. There's sustainable energy, so the transition to sustainable production and consumption of energy, ho hopefully the extension of life to another planet, um, writing genetics, uh, and AI. I'm, I'm more optimistic than Stephen Hawking um, or uh, Martin Rees, who's that astronomer royal. He thinks it's quite likely that civilization will end this century. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm personally more optimistic about uh, civilization, and, and I did say multi -planter. You say, what, what's the future you want? What's the future that seems, oh, that would be a good one. Um, then I think you want to have a future where we're space bringing civilization and multi planet species are out there exploring the stars. Just gonna be, I think that would be great. Uh, but, I mean, a, a strong second, and, and I think for some people maybe it, it will be the first motivation, is the preservation of uh, the future of consciousness and, 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 and human civilization as we know it. I mean, we, I think we have effectively created a, a, a kind of a superorganism before the internet, or particularly before advanced telecommunications. Uh, communication was incredibly slow. It would basically it would have to go from one person, literally, you know, to another. Uh, so, suddenly, all the world's information, all of humanity's knowledge, is instantly available to to any any person. That's just like one cell in your body having access to all the information about the rest of your body. We are going to face in the mid part of the century, a, and, and particularly the latter part of the century, a demographic implosion, the likes of which we haven't seen, including the Black Plague. It's as though someone went through and, and, and killed half the population, or at least of the future population. There, there's something better happen to turn this around. At this rate, the only thing that'll be left will be robots. You know, th three generations of 50% birth rate, of, uh, you know, 50% replacement rate, uh, gets you to 12% of where you were. And those, those poor 12%, all they're going to be doing is taking care of their grandparents. I mean, eventually there just won't be people at that rate. Uh, the other, I mean, I think religious extremism is obviously a concern. You know, if, if, that, um, if that grows over time, Yeah, I won't mention the third one. <laughs> I hope the AI is nice to us. Well, I think I think there's going to be probably. Probably four, apart from the, the internet. You know, there's the internet is sort of class as one sort of really big innovation, um, where humanity essentially acquired a, a nervous system and all of humanity's knowledge was instantly accessible from anywhere. Um, but in the other areas, I think there's sustainable energy. So the transition to sustainable production and consumption of energy, ho hopefully the extension of life to another planet, um, sort of. Depends on what pace progress is made in space transport and how long somebody lives, I guess. But then uh, reading and what we're, we have reading genetics, more or less, uh, but writing genetics uh, and AI. You have a confidence that we have the capacity to do those things, the human species. We're doing them. Um, you're referring to the Hyperloop. I was reading about the high-speed rail project in California, and it, and it just didn't, it, it seemed like we were going backwards. So it's almost like instead of going forward towards the Concorde, we actually went backwards towards the DC-3. That's, that doesn't make any sense. Um, Japan had some pretty impressive trains that they implemented in the 80s. Um, then, uh, then China implemented an even more advanced train. So it seems that one should, in the UK and California, we should try to say, okay, what can we do that's, that's a step beyond that? Right. Not, 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 from a st not from the standpoint of one-upmanship, one but, but rather from the, the standpoint of feeling that the future is going to be better. Um, that, that's the thing that, that's, you know, if you, you get up in the morning and you think the future is going to be better, it's a bright day. Otherwise, it's not. I, I'm not actually against like, high-speed rail. Like, um, if we just did high-speed rail yeah. that was, say, a step uh, above the Shanghai line. Yeah. Shanghai line is state-of-the-art uh, in, in China. Let, let's just take it a, just a half a notch uh, better than that, uh, and 
and then make sure we've got a, a straight path from LA to San Francisco as well as the milk run. Um, totally cool. I'm not saying we have to do the thing that I thought of. I just want us to have like a badass transportation system. I'm, I'm more optimistic than Stephen Hawking um, or uh, Martin Rees, who's that astronomer royally. He, he's, um, he's, he's also quite, uh, he thinks it's quite likely that civilization will end the century. Um, and he's head of the Royal Society, you know, he's not dying. Um, I hope he's wrong. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm personally more optimistic about uh, civilization. And, and I did say multi-planetary, so it's not right. from the standpoint of like, oh, let's go have it one planet but somewhere else. Right. Uh, you know, we want to have multiple planets and, I mean, have some, I mean, if you can imagine some, uh, you know, I, don't, I hesitate to use the word utopian society in the, in the future, but if you, if you say, well, what, what's the future you want? What's the future that seems, oh, that's, that'll be a good one. Um, then I think you want to have a future where we're a space bearing civilization, a multi planet species, and we're out there exploring the stars. It's going to be, I think that'll be great. Yeah. Uh, it, my, my motivation is, is, <clears throat> is more from the standpoint of it would be the, the best adventure and something really, really inspiring. Um, and I think it would make life more fun. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, that's personally the thing that motivates me the most. Uh, but it's, I mean, I, a strong second, and, and I think for some people maybe it, it would be the first motivation, is the preservation of uh, the future of consciousness um, and, and, and human civilization as we know it, uh, which is much more likely if we're on multiple planets than if we're on one. Uh, human consciousness has not been around very long from, from an evolutionary standpoint. It's really just like, feels to me like there was this little light that appeared suddenly, you know, Earth after four and a half billion years. Um, and it's hard to say, you know, how often does that happen? Maybe it's quite rare. Um, in fact, it would appear to be quite rare, or, or, or they're very good at hiding. Um, and so if, if it is a very rare thing, then we should take whatever actions we can to ensure uh, its long-term survival. I mean, we, I think we have effectively created a, a kind of a superorganism, you know, just, just in the same way that uh, it, it, when we just had multicellular creatures without nervous systems, and they would just communicate by osmosis. Mm -hmm. And um, before the internet, or particularly before advanced telecommunications, uh, communication was incredibly slow. Um, it would basically, it would have to go from one person, literally, you know, to another. and, and Maybe at best that person could carry a note from another person. That, that was, but, but it's still literally person to person. Um, so unless one person bumps into another person, they're pretty much not going to communicate. And with, uh, with, with um, telegraph and the telephone and then the internet, particularly the internet, uh, so suddenly all the world's information, all of humanity's knowledge is instantly available to, to any, any person. Um, and that's just like one cell in your body having access to all the information about the rest of your body. It, it is evolution on a, on a new plane. I, I, think, uh, I think demographics is, is a real issue where people are not having kids in a lot of countries. And you know, very often they'll say, oh, I'll solve it with immigration. Immigration from where? If Europe has an average, or many parts of Europe have an average of, of a 50 or 60, you know, they're only at 50 or 60 percent of what's needed for replacement, or China for that matter. Mm -hmm. They're at half replacement rate. Where exactly are we going to find 600 million people to replace the ones that were never born? Mm -hmm. I think people are going to have to regard, to some degree, uh, the, the notion of having kids as almost a social duty with, within reason. I mean, it just if you can and you're so inclined, you, sh you, sh you should. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, otherwise, Civilization will just die, literally. The birth rate is strongly correlated to, uh, well, it's, it's inversely correlated to wealth, inversely correlated to education, um, and correlated to religion. So the more religious you are, the less educated, uh, and the poorer you are, the more kids you will have. And this is true across between countries and within countries. Um, 
In, in the US, the highest birth rate is in Utah the, with the woman. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're saying for what are threats to civilization, uh, the, the lack of people is obviously a threat to civilization. Yeah. Um, we are going to face in the mid part of the century, a, and, and particularly the latter part of the century, a demographic implosion, the likes of which we haven't seen, including the Black Plague. The math is obvious. When, when, when did China ever experience a 50% reduction in its population? Never. I mean, basically, pre-writing, okay, because no one's ever written of such a thing. Even the Black Plague, uh, I mean, that, that would, when the Black Plagues would go through, they might, I think that they made a, might have demolished like a quarter, but never a half. And, and yet Spain, birth rate of 50%. It, it's, it's, it's as though someone went through and and, and killed half the population, or at least of the future population. Yeah. Um, th there's something better happen to turn this around, because otherwise, the, 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 you have a demographic, an inverted demographic pyramid, it's, and it's going to. At this rate, the only thing that'll be left will be robots. Yeah. You know, th three generations of 50% birth rate, of uh, you know, 50% replacement rate, uh, gets you to 12% of where you were, yeah. and those, those poor. 12%, all they're going to be doing is taking care of their grandparents. I mean, eventually there just won't be people at that rate. Uh, the other, I mean, I think religious extremism is obviously a concern. You know, if that, um, if that grows over time, uh, particularly if it's a sort of a Luddite form of religious extremism. Anti-technology, anti right, anti-science, right, exactly. Um, then that's an obvious threat. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mention the third one. <laughs> I hope the AI is nice to us. <laughs>